Hi there, and welcome back to Sotten Brain Hub. My name is Calvin, and today we'll be talking about cerebral abscesses. A cerebral abscess, more commonly known as a brain abscess, is an abscess caused by inflammation and collection of infected material within the brain tissue. These often originate from local infectious sources, such as ear infections, dental abscesses, or infections of the paranasal sinuses that spread directly to the brain. Infections in other parts of the body can also cause a brain abscess to form. For example, an infection causing pneumonia in the lung, or an infection causing endocarditis in the heart, may spread to the brain via the bloodstream. The infection may also be introduced through a skull fracture following head trauma, or by certain surgical procedures. The predominant organisms involved in the formation of a cerebral abscess include staphylococci, such as Staph aureus, aerobic and anaerobic streptococci, bacteroides, privatella, enterobacteriaceae, and pseudomonas species. Fungi, such as aspergillus and candida, and parasites may also cause the disease. These are especially associated with immunocompromised patients. Bacterial abscesses rarely, if ever, arise de novo within the brain, although establishing a cause can be difficult in many cases. Importantly, there is almost always a primary lesion elsewhere in the body, which needs to be treated to avoid relapse. The classical triad of a rapidly progressing fever, a severe headache that cannot be relieved by painkillers, and focal neurological findings are highly suggestive of brain abscess. These symptoms are caused by a combination of increased intracranial pressure due to a space-occupying lesion, infection, and focal neurological brain tissue damage. Headache is characteristically worse at night and in the morning, as the intracranial pressure naturally increases when in the supine position. Other frequent presenting symptoms include drowsiness, confusion, vomiting, seizures, hemiparesis, speech difficulties, or changes to vision such as blurring. Neurological examination may also reveal a stiff neck in occasional cases. Additional findings depend largely on the specific location of the abscess in the brain. The diagnosis is established by either a contrast MRI or CT scan. Lumbar puncture is contraindicated, however CT-guided aspiration may be used to remove a sample of pus for testing. During the initial phase of inflammation, the lesion does not have a capsule and may be difficult to distinguish from other space-occupying lesions or infarcts. Within four to five days, the dead brain tissue is surrounded by a capsule, giving rise to a thin, ring-enhancing lesion appearance on MRI or CT scans. This occurs as intravenously applied contrast material cannot pass through the capsule and instead collects around its edge. Other scan findings may include an area of central necrosis, a visible fluid level within the abscess, and associated areas of surrounding inflammation. The treatment of a cerebral abscess involves lowering the increased intracranial pressure and starting intravenous antibiotics, usually initially with keftriaxone plus metronidazole if suspecting a bacteroides infection, or vancomycin if suspecting a staphylococcus infection. Meanwhile, blood cultures should be requested to identify the actual causative organism to help guide more targeted therapy, including antifungals if required. If abscesses are less than 2 cm in diameter, they may be treated with antibiotics alone. If abscesses enlarge after antibiotic treatment, surgical drainage is then indicated. This can be via either simple aspiration of the abscess through a hole in the skull, or via a craniotomy. Complications of a cerebral abscess may include a recurring abscess, permanent damage to brain tissue, epilepsy, or meningitis. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to like it if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and others related to the anatomy of the head, neck, and brain. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.